and today I have with me for a very special interview, VTuber and voice actress, Lena! Hey, Lena! Hey, everyone, what's up? My name is Lena. <laughs> oh, that timing! That timing was perfect! <laughs> <laughs> well played well played ah uh, so lena who are you and what do you do hi i'm lena i am a very new vtuber and um i like to do fun stuff on twitch <laughs> uh okay so lena how'd you get started vtubing um well honestly it it started to become a real rabbit hole on honestly the I, I kind of didn't expect to happen um at first i used to be an irl streamer and i got really tired of just showing my face constantly so i was just like there's got to be some way to be interacting and yet like not really show my face and then i started seeing people like you know using just PNGs or even using like live 2D models. And I was just like, whoa, what's what's going on here? And then I, I looked into it and then I fell into this like quicksand of a pit and I never returned. Oh my God. But wait, you're here now though. I, I am, I am. So but, you did return, obviously. Well, well or, or if you think about it, you're with me falling into this hole. Oh, I was in a hole a long time ago, let me tell you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so, Lena, like, were you, if you were an IRL streamer before, like, was it the anxiety? Was it the pressures? Were you worried about your privacy? What was it that wanted you to switch to VTubing instead of IRL streaming? Um, laziness. Oh! <laughs> if I'm gonna be real with you, um, I, I feel like... There is always, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's like one of those things where it's just like it's an invisible line of where you're like self-consciously, you're kind of expected to look pretty on camera sometimes. Um, I, I do know like there are, th there are people that are just like, no, you don't have to do that. Um, you know, just, just be you and you'll be fine. But I, I, I still feel like realistically, like sometimes you're more looked at when when you're dolled up for for like stream or for for like any, any of those kinds of um of things and honestly i'm just <laughs> i'm just really lazy to put on makeup on so i was just like why do that if i could just have an avatar that already looks mega cute and just do the stream like that very true, very true, very clever. Kind of a, an IRL life hack. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. But I just want you to know that you look pretty 24-7 with or without makeup, and I hope you know that. Yes, I'm, I, I've definitely grown um, and accepted the fact that I'm good looking. <laughs> yeah! That's what I'm talking about! Self-confidence for the win! <laughs> Absolutely. But, you yeah, know, it's just... I, I it's not like a detrimental thing if I'm like pretty or not as long as I'm just like entertaining and I find myself entertaining so that's already a win-win. <laughs> damn right, damn right. Uh so Lena, can you tell us about your V2 model? Like where's the inspiration come from? Why the choice in design and colors? Like give us the rundown. What's the origin story of your V2 model? Um, yeah, absolutely. In the beginning, I used to have a 3D model. Um, she used to have a bun, and she kind of wore tech wear, and it kind of looked like m me in, in some ways. And I decided to go live 2D, and I've talked to a couple of my artist friends, and I was just like, hey man, I really want to give you like a full-on uh, artist creativity here, so just go wild. Like You, you have the artist freedom to, to you know think of like you know what would be cool i said uh maybe you could look at some arc knight characters i i love some of the tech wear uh and i was just like and these are some of the color schemes that i was thinking about and then like i sent them a couple of things from pinterest and 
there you have it. They created this model for me. <laughs> Can you shout out the specific artist if that's okay? I notice you have a lot of art done for your for your character. Yeah, absolutely. Um, their name is uh, Jensen Wake, and they're mostly available. On, I'm more active on Twitter. I will send you the deets right there. But that is basically my my creator who designed um my my character and the person who did my model is a lovely lovely um person named iq chan does very um awesome modeling and animations and all that shenanigans and uh yeah those are those are basically the the main two links will be in the description and in the comment section down below for those of you who want to check them out mm -hmm. they're absolutely talented <laughs> You mentioned earlier that you like techware, and that was one of the inspirations for your uh, for your VTuber model character. But I, I noticed like um, a lot of a lot of aesthetics about your character, like really uh, really similar to pop stars or uh, creative artists. Is that uh, never one of the inspirations for your character model? Um, a little bit, yes and no. Um, I never really thought about it until later on, where I was just like. Not really I don't really consider myself as like a musician of sorts. I just do things for fun. But um I started looking at a lot of the aesthetics. Like I, I've noticed like some KDA um vibes and I was just like, huh. Oh, oh maybe I should be a little bit of a musician now. <laughs> you actually are a singer, correct? Kind of. Kind of very very new, I'm very new to it, and I'm very very foreign to it. I I recently just um did a full cover of um an, of a song, and I also do mini covers that are like roughly a minute ish long on a uh, Twitter. And so you're saying if more people follow and support you on all your platforms, you'll do more <laughs> singing, right? All they have to do is like pay you and follow you and subscribe, and you'll do more singing, right? Oh, absolutely. I'll do my best. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's really... um, it, It's quite the procedure to make full a full cover. Like, I, I've seen all of these people make covers and stuff, and I was just like, wow, that looks easy. They're just singing into a microphone and just, you know, they just slap an illustration and boom, it's, it's all, it's all good. But no. It's like you have to put audition on or you have to like, you know, you can use After Effects or you have somebody do the motion graphics and then there's like the lyrics that you got to put in. And I was just like, wow, this is actually a lot of work that <laughs> I expected. Nothing but, prepares you for the editing phase. Nothing. Oh, my God. My goodness. I, <laughs> I edit it. I, so I edit most of my uh, or I do most of my mixing on my own but I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> all I know is that reverb just saves lives. That's all I gotta say. True. Very true. <laughs> yeah, no, it's nuts to actually, like, I'm, I'm, I, whenever I look at the credits or whenever um, musicians, like, you know, say, oh, these people did all of these, you know, leaving the credits, and I was just like, wow, no wonder there are a lot of people they tag in because this is a lot. <laughs> But um, yeah, I, I, hopefully if I get more of a, a, a cult following, I guess, I'll, I'll definitely do more scuff, uh, scuff videos of me singing. <laughs> so what you're saying, Lena, is we have to form a cult around you, the cult of Lena. Yes, uh, yes, absolutely. Just have the insomniac uh, callers around me. All right, you know what to do, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you have your orders. <laughs> Although I will say that's kind of more of a side thing that um I I do it's mostly like a hobby thing for the most part I I do focus on You have more, starting more a cult as a hobby and side thing? Yes, yes, it's a, it's a side hobby actually. <laughs> um it, it's kind of a secret so make sure you kind of just like, you know, just just keep it between you and me, you know what I mean? Of course, of course. You do know this interview is going to go go live. It's going to be public on the internet, though, right? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. 
<laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> I did not see that coming. <laughs> oh, you're amazing. You're amazing, Lena. Oh my god. Thank, thank you, thank you. Oh. Speaking of being amazing, not only are you a streamer and singer, but you're also a voice actress for hire, correct? Um, I'm trying to make my um, demo reel at the moment. Um, I'm, I'm no professional whatsoever, but yeah, I, I guess I'm like a voice actress in, in training in, in a way. But if I get the opportunity to do anything, then I'll do it. Well, hell yeah. So what, what inspired you to do all of these things? Streaming, singing, voice acting? This is a lot to a lot of work you're committing yourself to. Do you just love art and content creation, or is there something more behind this? Um, I've always just loved expressing myself in either in a musical way or a theatrical way or just even simply just by playing a video game in front of everybody. Um, I always just want to like not really like spread a message but just basically just tell people it's so there's like all these different ways you could express yourself with so why not give it a shot you know um i i feel like these aspects are are really important in life <laughs> um and i just want to like do as many things as possible especially while i'm still like i'm still able to use my voice i guess um that, that's kind of like the reasons why i enjoy singing um uh, why i enjoy doing small voice acting things kind of why i like talking to my audience and being goofy around them yeah oh that's wonderful that's wonderful lena so tell me, what are your inspirations in terms of other content creators? Like, who did you watch before you decide, yeah, I want to do that? Wow. Um, <laughs> that's, I feel like as a, I want to say like middle school, I've always watched like just random uh, content creators at first. Uh, I remember back when, uh, what was his name? Uh, dude, whoa, oh my god, I can't even remember his name anymore. Um, uh, the, the tragedy oh of getting god. old. Yeah, I know. Oh my god, and I was just watching one of his montages before. Uh, uh, now I gotta Google him. Shoot, he's the one that pretended to be Morgan Freeman in one of these, like... Lena... Do you know how many people pretend to be Morgan Freeman? I know, there's so many people. Oh my goodness. Ah, oh my goodness, goodness, goodness. Wait, I'm trying. Now, now actually, now it's actually. What's his name? C Nanners. That's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so back in the day when C Nanners was a big thing, um, what was it? It was uh was it the hidden? I think it might have been like the hidden. That's the game that they were playing. And this dude who was like friends with him was pretending to be Morgan Freeman while hunting these people down. And it was like the funniest thing ever. And I've always like, it, I've always cracked myself up like laughing from those kinds of videos. And I think that's what inspired me in, in a way. Like it was that like one specific video because like, I legitimately thought it was Morgan Freeman. I was just like, no way, no way, that's not another person. That has to be Morgan Freeman. And later on, I've come to accept it that it was somebody else. But um, I, I feel like creating that kind of scenario while improving and being entertaining too at the same time was just very mind blowing for me. And I think that's what really inspired me to like, get into theater and get into like gaming more often and and yeah it, it, another rabbit hole oh man speaking of rabbit holes can you tell us a bit about your what tech you use for vtubing um okay <laughs> i'm also very new to this so i don't know everything um recently on steam vtube studio did just launch so um that's one of the that is the program that I, I use for um 
for VTubing in, in general, I just like import my my model file into the uh into the app and I would just turn on the turn on the camera and you know just have a have it calibrated and uh yeah there you go there's my character whoop de doop de doo it's pretty simple well yeah but uh like what's the extent of your motion tracking what kind of camera do you use like the the little technical details oh super technical details um i just use some dinky ass logitech camera <laughs> hold on Actually, I actually got this for Christmas gift. I should remember. I should remember what I what I got for for her gifts. Uh, do, 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 do. What kind of Logitech camera did I get? Please. Really, that long ago. Time flies. Yep. Um, Especially when you're in the middle of a pandemic and locked inside your own home. <laughs> oh boy, ain't that a mood? I got the. Okay, so it is a Logitech C nine two. Zero S, and it's the one that has the little privacy shutter so that I can close it so the FBI won't look at me. Ah, ah, I see, I see. Well done, well played. <laughs> yes, yes. But, take um, that, FBI. Take that, FBI and hackers. <laughs> won't see me pick my nose this time. <laughs> <laughs> So, Lena, do you plan on, like, upgrading, going full 3D, full body model? Like, how far do you want to take VTubing, or do you just want the basics, the essentials, so that you can focus on having fun? Um, I'm going to focus on having fun. Um, m honestly, so, so, I know there are people who have all these, like, fancy, um, models and all, all that stuff, and I'm really happy for them, it's just that it's... I'm gonna be real for this is also another thing that nobody told me and I think people should know. VTubing is kind of expensive. <laughs> it's a little bit of an investment and if you're willing to drop some bucks, then yeah, go for it. But I feel like um that was definitely one thing I did not learn before jumping into it is that it can be a little bit pricey. So um Although I, I will say that you don't need to have the most expensive model. You don't need to have like BGMs. You don't really need to have overlays. Those are just like cosmetic things that are nice to have, but they're not necessary. I would say just really have fun. And if you do end up getting enough money to get like really fancy stuff, by all means, treat yourself. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, I I feel like. If I if if my if my cult allows me to, I I will end up in maybe getting like an awesome three D model hopefully in the future. But for now, I am incredibly happy with the model that I have. Brilliant, brilliant. Can you tell us about what little voice acting you've done? Um, I've only done very very minimal things. Um, back when I was in college, I actually did a um. A car commercial <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> yeah i was i was it was it was uh, it was like on the radio so it wasn't anything like super fancy but it was just like a basic like car deal salesmanship and um i think i did a pizzeria or in that area yeah like in the kingston area um but yeah they're, they're just like very small gigs like that nothing like video game or, or anime in, involvement but it was fun I, I won't lie it was it was kind of an experience <laughs> would you like to voice act and star in an anime or a video game or something like that i think that would be absolutely amazing yes i'll call some people let them know ah <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> i'm not even messing around i'm being serious <laughs> oh wait really who <laughs> <laughs> so do you just have a soundboard on standby oh absolutely <laughs> okay i gotta know i gotta know this is off script this isn't a question i plan to ask but how many bloody settings do you have on that soundboard oh not a lot i, I really want more though <laughs> Not a lot, but I've only got the key, key things that I need for now. 
<laughs> I dare not ask what. I'll leave that a surprise. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, man. All right. All right. Last professional question. I want to ask Lena, in your opinion, what's the what's the easiest, most fun thing about VTubing and just live streaming content creation in general? And what would you say is like the, the least fun, the, the hardest aspect of it? Um, so first off, the really fun part about VTubing is that, um, it kind of lets a lot of, um, the introverted people to, like, shine a little bit, and they tend to be a little bit more open, I guess, because you kind of have, like, a mask of sorts that makes you more comfortable interacting with people. Well, at least that's how I feel. And... It just feels really nice to like see your friends being really supportive um, towards the community and you and friends and all, and they show up on your stream and the new people show up on your stream. And I don't know, I guess it's just like for me, I enjoy creating moments that are memorable for me. Um, yeah, I, I feel like for me, that's that's the really fun slash easy part, I guess. Um, the hard part is creating content um it, it's not it's not the not fun part it's it, it is the the hardest part i think because sometimes you doubt oh well i i sometimes i doubt myself and i get a little bit worried as just like am i not talking enough am i not interacting with them or am or is the current thing that i'm doing very boring for people or like you know it kind of just like how you have all these like doubt in your head and these voices kind of like telling you to be like more entertaining or do this or do that um sometimes even just motivating yourself um when you're not feeling as great is always another um tough thing and not so fun part either um it's it's finding it's also finding the balance between whether you're pushing yourself a little bit too much for creating the content or whether you're creating the content because you genuinely enjoy it and you genuinely want to do it is also um i think a very uh challenging aspect of um vtubing or just even being a content creator period i think i very true very true. Thank you so much for sharing, Lena. And yeah. so, if people want to follow you, it's uh, what, what's your full d descriptor username on Twitter and Twitch? Um, my Twitter is at uh, Lena VTuber. It is L E N N A V T U B E R. And my Twitch is Lena Seventh Lotus, which is L E N N A. The number seven, T H L O T U S. Please follow her. Links will be in the description and in the comment section below. Click the links. I have to ask though, the seventh lotus bit, where does that come from? Well, that, that, funny enough, it's actually the, um, it's actually Lena. So in, in Japanese, Lena actually means the seventh lotus. Oh! Oh, that. <laughs> That's cute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask you some more personal questions so we can get to know you uh, a bit more. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, what are your favorite hobbies? What do you like to do when you have free time? When I have free time, I love resin art. <laughs> I'm unfamiliar with this. What is that? Um, resin art is basically where uh, it is very, very toxic, first off, so make sure your your place is well ventilated. Um, <laughs> it's resin art is basically, um, you know how like when you see those plastic charms or um, acrylic uh, looking things, uh, hold on, let me, let me actually, let me actually like show you some stuff like they do really cool stuff with it uh ch -ch 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 -ch. it's like things like that um resin art you can make like little sculptures or you can pour in these things you can pour it in to make it like a certain mold that you want or um oh i see yeah 
Um, so resin is the material, is what they use. And it's really cool, very toxic, uh, but it's super shiny and I really like it. And specifically what I like to use the resin for is um, I like to make dice. Ooh. Yeah. Um, dice, because like I'm also a big uh, D&D uh, person. Ah, uh, who could have seen that coming as soon as she mentioned dice? Am I right, everybody? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, it's it it I, I just like making clickety clacks and every time when I look at some of the stuff I'm just like, oh look, they cost so expensive. So what if I just make my own dice instead? <laughs> there you go, beating the system. Exactly. But yeah, I I, I enjoy I, I enjoy making dice on the down low when I have time. Um other than that, I I love to cook. Um, Ooh. I, I genuinely like cooking and baking a lot of stuff. Uh, what else am I? I'm kind of a tea connoisseur. Um, I love good tea. <laughs> ah, so we can expect a, a series about tea, perhaps a, a review series sometime in the future from you? Absolutely. I was actually, um, go I was actually talking to a couple of my VTuber friends and we were going to have a little bit of a tea time kind of a collab and we would just talk about like loose leaf tea versus like tea bags or like you know what kind of tea you would want to drink with certain things like it's kind of like a pairing thing but um yeah i please i it. beg of you link me this as soon as this goes live i will promote this to to the high heavens that sounds amazing <laughs> thank you but yeah it's absolutely love tea uh what else do i like uh well, I suspect since you're a streamer, you like video games, yeah? Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially this one particular video game. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, we may have had this uh, conversation before. If you can't tell, I'm being a wee bit sarcastic, everyone listening. <laughs> so, um, Final Fantasy XIV? Did somebody say Final Fantasy XIV? Um, <laughs> I absolutely love that game. Please, gush about it. Tell me why. Sell oh, me on it. Goodness. Okay, so... <laughs> whenever I tell people about Final Fantasy XIV, I usually give them a little bit of a warning beforehand. The first base game is absolutely boring as shit. It's so fucking boring. I can't, I can't even, like, explain or begin to explain how... how unattentive I was with with the story it literally felt like hey yeah i guess you are the warrior of light but you're also kind of like a pizza delivery boy or like you're basically like the messenger boy who just like goes around doing like all these little things and i was just like god this is really boring and then the second third and fourth expansion happened or the first the the the, the heaven sword Stormblood and then Shadowbringers happened and then I just went never mind this is probably one of the most well written games I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's just oh man, the story really hypes up when um you actually finish the base game. It, that's when things pick up uh story wise and um I don't know, I just I don't want to spoil it too much but um the second or, or the second part of the game, which is uh, Heaven's Ward, is do you like politics and dragons? Then that sure is up your alley. And do you like feeling emotions? Then that's absolutely up your alley. And then uh, Stormblood is just like, hey, I guess we're going to China and Japan of this world. And I hope you like an action movie-esque kind of story because this is what it is. And then Shadowbringers is just like, hey, do you like your emotions? Because we're about to uh, destroy them in like three seconds. And you're just like, oh, okay. I guess my emotions are destroyed. <laughs> oh, man. So the story is really the main grab for you. For, for me, absolutely. Um, that and uh, some of the, um, the music is absolutely amazing. Um, I, I can't even it it's so good. Um they they use they have like the orchestral, like, you know, fantasy-esque uh soundtrack, obviously, but 
um, the the composer Sokin, he adds in rock into into some of the songs, and it's really good and well well made. Um, yeah, I, I definitely whenever I, I recommend video games, they tend to have like a really solid um, soundtrack, if anything. Um, but yeah, the, uh, I, I also feel like when it comes to Final Fantasy XIV, as much of an MMO, uh, like it's obviously like advertised as an MMORPG, it still has that RPG campaign and you play kind of solo for the most part. I mean, obviously there's like the dungeons, the trials, and, and um, the boss fights that are like four people to eight people to even 24 people. Good but, lord. Yeah, yeah. But for the most part, you could enjoy it solo. At least I know I enjoyed it solo. So everyone, that was the highest recommendation possible from Lena about uh, Final Fantasy XIV. Go play it now. <laughs> also, also, yeah, the base game is totally free right now. And also, um, Heavens, you could play Heavens Ward for free. And you also, there's the free trial. You could be like level 50, 60 for free. Like, so you don't have to pay sub monthly. Just, just do the free trial. It's so. Really so when is Square Enix going to hire you for advertisement? Dude, I swear, Square Enix needs to... I, I basically just need to be a character from Final Fantasy XIV. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what other games do you like to play? I love playing a lot of indie games. Um, I wish I was good at um, FPS, but I, one, I'm not very good at it. Two, I get motion sickness very easily. Three, I hate myself and I probably just play it anyways. But um I like I've been playing um this game called uh Deep Deep Rock Galactic, I think. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah, I love that game. Yeah, I, I I've been enjoying being a dwarf and being drunk and mining and <laughs> killing bugs. Um That's what that's one way to describe the game, yeah. I that's like the best way to describe the game. <laughs> um what else? I've enjoyed playing monster prom with some of my friends um i sometimes play stardew valley um i like playing D. &D. Uh, i like playing drunk uno and getting my friends obliterated and oh um, no <laughs> oh yes and i love uh i i can enjoy monster hunter world that's always good <gasps> yes but uh for the most part i feel like the thing that i do the most is pretty much like drunk uno so if people tune into you on Twitch, they can expect uh, some drunk Uno streams in the future. Oh, absolutely! I've actually, um, funny enough, at least uh, not in March because it's a little bit of a of a busy busy month for me. But um, I am aiming for at least once a month or or twice a month. Um, I I do drunk collabs with a bunch of my friends, and I just get them obliterated. <laughs> And it's beautiful. <laughs> Remember to follow Lena on Twitch for for future drunk streams. Oh, absolutely, and it's it's fine. It's like hilarious. Um, I've actually had one friend just they died in in, in stream. Like they just they just went missing. Like <laughs> the last words were "ha ha." And then, and then the person just blacked out the rest of the stream, and oh it was just God. it was just two two of my friends, and then we were just like talking about it. Another one, it, um, another another friend just fell asleep. Like we just we just like at one point we just heard her heard her snore. Oh my God! It was the cutest thing ever. But yeah, um, my my drunk collabs, I I usually try to give them no mercy and. Just get obliterated, man. <laughs> wow. Oh, I hope you know you're going to get a lot of new followers when this interview goes live. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. So do you, do you watch any movies? I, I, I'm i sure you do, Lena. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I do. I, I do watch some movies. I don't think I'm a big, like, movie nerd if anything i i mean i do watch a lot of anime um i can enjoy um some good movies here and there 
Do you mind sharing us, like, what, what are some of your favorites? Your favorite movies, TV shows, anime? What do you watch when you can? Um, usually I try to watch as, as many things as possible. <laughs> Any of the new stuff I usually like to watch. Um, recently there's the new Higurashi When They Cry series. Very good. I was, I was very surprised with that. Um, what else is there? There's this sappy rom-com that I enjoy called Horimiya. Really cute. You like the, the cutesy stuff. Uh, shonen-wise, probably... I do recommend uh, Fire Force. Fire Force is actually really cool. Uh, hmm, 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 hmm. What else is there? I also really like to watch some old stuff. Oh, Jujutsu Kaisen is actually really good too. I definitely do recommend that. Um, Freaking awesome. Uh, Movie-wise, I tend to watch more of the horror genre. Oh yes! Now you're speaking my language. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a very big uh horror fan. Uh I recently kind of rewatched uh The Train to Busan. That was really, really good. Oh, that's a real good one, yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like if that's if like people when they talk about like zombie movies, I feel like Train to Busan is like a a, a solid zombie movie done right, if that makes any sense, because there's like a lot of them that just <laughs> really don't work out <laughs> uh unfortunately very true yeah uh what else is there um i i feel like i appreciate asian horror a lot more than like the um, um, typical american american horror i don't want to be like really basic and just be like oh watch the ring or blah 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 because like <laughs> <laughs> the, the ring at its time was like good and I can understand why it's good, but like, I also just like watching not just like the the spooky ghost aspect of it. I really just like watching, I guess, disturbing horror too. I know there's like um body horror, like Tetsuo, or like a kind of like a slight psychological kind of okay, it's pretty gore, but like audition or um. I also really like watching, um, not niche, but um, I guess ones that are kind of just like a little bit too fucked up to to watch. Oh, you like to uh, skirt across that line, eh? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's only because like it's very interesting to see um how people like how brave for stuff, how freaking brave people are making uh. <laughs> movies like that um i feel like a, a good not really a good example but like one of the uh safer examples would be like um the animated movie uh perfect blue i have not heard of that one what's the premise um the premise is basically about this um girl who is a who used to be an, an idol um she she it, it okay uh, first off it's a it's a 19 nine i think it's a it's a 97 yeah i think it's 97 and it's a psychological thriller and it's um basically about a idol singer who basically gives up her idol career to become an actress and the but the only problem is um she slowly just goes insane Oh dear. When, um certain events happen and the scary part is sometimes you don't know whether you the viewer is getting tricked by her her um sense of vision or hallucination so that you yourself can't really tell if she's hallucinating or something is actually happening. Oh, the uh, the unreliable narrator. Right, right, yeah. And um, I think what really, why I kind of recommend like kind of fucked up movies like that is because in a way, it really manages to keep you on the edge of your seat because of like its storytelling and also mature themes. And I feel like the movie successfully makes it creepy in a very 
unsettling way. And um, yeah, I, I feel like uh, obviously it does like it is a little bit rated M, guys. So be careful. Um, blue protocol, you said it's called? Um, no, it's called Perfect Blue. Oh, Perfect Blue. Why did I think Blue Protocol? I'm dumb. I'm sorry. You you mean you mean the the, the game? Wait, that's a game? Yeah, blue blue protocol. What the hell? How? Uh, I guess I just heard the word blue, and somehow my brain—I don't know. I'm sorry. No, no, don't be. That's actually one of the MMORPGs I've been wanting to play for a little while. Oh well, what do you know? What yeah. a coincidence! I know. So I was just like, when you said that, I was just like, wait, are we talking about Blue Protocol now? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, okay. To change things up a bit, so Lena, what are some of your favorite animals? The capybara. Oh boy, I have a friend who will really like you, but do tell, tell me more. I, I love capybaras. I think they're incredibly chill and they're so unique looking. They're, they kind of like look like a little bit of like a furry hippo. I don't know why, but I think they're, they just look so cute. And I've always wanted to like chill with one. It's been like such a dream. And I always like see them in in like uh the hot springs and i just want to be there with them <laughs> i also really love sugar gliders i really want them as pets uh what else do i like i also really like uh leopard geckos is that what they're called yeah i know what you're talking about they are they are pretty cute <laughs> yeah yeah they, they just they just smile and it's so cute Ugh, i love them they're so happy looking but uh, I'm I'm a big uh, big animal enthusiast here. Oh, wonderful, wonderful! Favorite foods besides tea. Hoo Um, are we talking about like sweets or are we talking about like savory things? Anything, just favorite foods. Wow. Um, I love soba. Uh, for savory things. I love having like an afternoon tea. I just said things that aren't tea. No, 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 no. It's not tea because it 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 it, con it, it contains scones, biscuits, uh, sandwiches, and sweet tarts, depending on the menu. That's not that's not a tea though. That's a whole friggin' meal. That's what I mean. It's an afternoon tea set. Oh my. <laughs> Okay, okay. I'll I'll give you that one. I also like a really good Japanese parfait. Can't go wrong with that. Ooh, what's that? Uh it is basically get a nice cute glass, right? And then you put some uh whipped cream and then you put like any kind of fruit depending on what you want, and then you could put some crunchy stuff and then the ice cream and then more cream and then more fruit. Oh, so it's like a, a, a sundae. Essentially, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. all right. That sounds, ooh, much. that sounds really good. <laughs> yeah. I know in Japan they make, like, more extravagant-looking ones and really fancy-looking, and I love them. <laughs> Could eat those all day. Now, Lena, what do you find sexy? What do I find sexy? Yes. A well-dressed human being. <laughs> We talking suit and tie? We talking about fine dress? Oh, both. Like, I I totally appreciate like just people who who are just well dressed. I I find that very intriguing to me. In what way? I don't know. It's just I I guess it's I really think the clean look is very sexy. You know, like they're dressed to impress. Whether it's for themselves or for others, I'm always just like, mmm, chef's kiss. So good. Ah, you appreciate the effort. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they don't even have to put that much effort in. It just looks like they put a lot of effort in their looks, whether it's like from makeup or whether it's like the type of things that they wear. And because of that, they look sharp or they look good, you know? I, I definitely appreciate it. Um, I love voices. Oh, <laughs> I, of course. <laughs> a good voice will absolutely pique my attention. Um, what else do I find sexy? Uh, very weird, 
but not so weird. Rolled up sleeves. <laughs> no, I get that. I totally get that. I, I think that's incredibly sexy. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's all I got, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Writing this all down. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, Lena, it's time for some silly bullshit questions. Are you ready? Bring it on. How would you survive a zombie apocalypse? Very easy. I wouldn't. Oh, dear God. I am so <laughs> sick and tired of this answer. No, you're not getting out of this. How would you survive a zombie apocalypse? I just want you to know, almost every time I ask this fucking question, everyone say, oh, I, I die. No, you don't. <laughs> try. Damn okay, okay. No, no, I can try. I can certainly try. I would be... I would be absolutely solid for like roughly four months tops. What Only because after the fourth month. Well, I'd run out of food. <laughs> well, you get you get more food. You fight the zombies. We have Walking Dead to learn from. You don't understand. I am the type of person who struggles doing five push-ups. Oh. <laughs> I'm anemic. I get tired. I am so out of breath. Like, oh, I'm Dunyan rings, dude. Did you just say Dunyan rings? Dunyan rings with a side order of fries and a large Coke, homie. Oh, wow. P the people are going to love you. They're going <laughs> to love you when I'm hosting. <laughs> okay, fine. Fine. I'll accept that answer. Oh, man. Okay. All right. Actually, wait. Let's change this up a bit. How would you survive a bunny apocalypse? Bunnies are overpopulating the earth. There's too many bunnies. They're filling up every household. Like, they're, like there's going to be more bunnies than people. What, what do you do? Well, I mean, it depends. Are we talking about, like, Monty Python, the Holy Grail bunnies? Or are we talking about, like, the ReZero, like, scary bunnies? Or is it just, like, really cute-looking bunnies that won't do anything? We're talking about regular bunnies. There's just too many of them. They're oh. everywhere. <laughs> like, chuck them in the meat grinder. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> They're food. Like it's like an oh. it's like an unending supply of food and warmth. You can make it out of bunny fur, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just saying, if they're overpopulating, then just like turn them into like, I don't know, rabbit nuggets, like Rabbit Nuggets <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow, I was not expecting that answer. I <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, okay, so, Lena, what would be the ultimate prank you would pull on someone? Um, it depends. Like, is this, like, pranking someone, like, is in, like, haha, gotcha, or is it just, like, haha, gotcha, but now you're also slightly traumatized? Oh, let's do both. Let's do both. <laughs> hmm. I feel like, for me, the ultimate prank would be having someone be... Okay, but this is, like, a total requirement, though. This person needs to be, like, an incredibly deep sleeper. Like, they need to be... They need to be either blackout drunk or just clonked out. Uh, <laughs> clonked out? It, it's one or the... It, it has to be... This person does, cannot be a light sleeper. Um, I want them to be on a mattress, and I want to just push them off, like, just, just send them off into, like, a bed of water. Oh, God! I think that would be, like, the funniest thing ever. It would probably <laughs> scare the shit out of the victim, though. Like, they wake oh, up and they're in the middle of a lake. I, I think that would be hilarious. Oh, my God. All right. So, note to self, don't go on a camping trip with you <laughs> near a lake. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I will. I will do that to people. Um, <laughs> when it comes to trying to prank someone in a traumatizing way... If I'm able to convince them that a deja vu is basically your last checkpoint, oh, I think that would be hilarious. Just give them an existential crisis? Absolutely. Oh my god. <laughs> I I think that would be the funniest thing ever. Oh, wow, you're <laughs> You're pretty sinister, I gotta say, Lena. I was oh, not oh. expecting this. <laughs> a little bit, yes. 
like when I brought up this prank question, I was expecting like, oh, like a cream pie in the face, bucket of water on the head. No, you're just like, no, t toss them in the middle of the ocean, give them an existential <laughs> crisis, just really fuck them up. <laughs> I mean, you, if you gotta prank someone, you gotta make it good. You gotta make it memorable. Okay, okay, oh, all right, now, now, this is the most important question I ask on any and every interview. Are you ready? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Was that the question? No. <laughs> okay, because, like, I, that, I did answer that question. Yes, I'm ready. No. <laughs> okay, okay, so, tits or ass? I have the perfect quote for this. Oh, boy. Tits are life, but ass is hometown. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Last silly bullshit question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lena, what's your favorite swear word? My favorite swear word? Um, Man, that's a good question. I think my favorite swear word would be... <laughs> and, <laughs> and probably... <laughs> and, there. Absolutely good. Doing a wonderful job. <laughs> oh, 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 shit. Oh, man. If you're not convinced already to follow and subscribe <laughs> and support Lena out everywhere, I, I don't know what else to tell you. Oh, man. Okay. Okay. Holy shit. All right. Huh. Huh. So, all right. So here comes the last section of the interview and this is really special so yeah i think you're gonna have a lot of fun with this all right now you get to ask me questions and they can be as serious or as silly as you want i'm an open book for you ask me anything wow anything anything all right that's all i wanted to ask and <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> what what made you interested like in in the vtubing community because like i actually have noticed you you are friends with like voice actors actresses and um they they tend to be uh leaning towards vtubing ah well just because um i really got into voice acting specifically uh not safe for work voice acting for adult content thanks mm -hmm. to the video game subverse have you heard of it no, I haven't. Do you mind telling oh. me more about it? Oh, it's like the biggest budget, well, hentai game ever. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. like, I originally made a video, like, kind of like, whoa, isn't this crazy? This is this is a porn game, but like, it's like, it's actually like really well made. It's got a huge budget, and it, like incredible graphics and top tier voice acting. And one of the voice actresses actually reached out to me via YouTube comments and then later Discord. Mm -hmm. Shout out to my best friend in the world, Pixie Willow. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, because of this lewd game, I met my best friend ever, and mm -hmm. she introduced me to all her voice acting friends, and then I just got into not just, uh, like, not safe for work content, but just the world of voice acting in general, uh, mm -hmm. in all corners of content creation, and I've just really come to appreciate voice acting, and uh, a lot of my voice actress friends are getting into VTubing, because they see it as like an excellent means of like content creation, getting to know their audiences, grow their brand. And then I've just seen, as a YouTube content creator myself, I've just seen the explosion mm -hmm. of VTubers on YouTube. Um, Gargura, mm -hmm. um, freaking Project Melody, like all, like all these other big, big uh, celebrities, uh, creators that just came out of left field thanks to VTubing. Like it's offered a whole new avenue for people to just express themselves, create unique and entertaining content, and I'm I'm just all for independent creators being able to grow and thrive and beat the system. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it, it, it's really cool to actually like 
finally i get i guess like meet meet someone else who's like not just my friends but just like meet meet somebody who is in like the voice acting community of sorts i i just think it's just like really cool to meet people like that um wow what other questions can i ask what are your favorite kinds of horror movies oh Ooh, I, I like I especially love monster movies. I love anything with cool creative creatures. Um, but I also love when that's mixed with a bit of psychological horror. So one of my favorite horror movies of all time, if not my favorite horror movie, is John Carpenter's The Thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Classic, classic, very classic. Like one, I like the the disturbing creature designs, like they are like you just like they're horrifying, but you can't take your eyes off them. Mm-hmm. Especially Very knowing true. that that's all practical effects, but also I love the the who done it, mm-hmm. the who done who is the thing? Or is there more than one thing? Are the things working with each other against each other? I, I love the murder mystery. I mm-hmm. love a good mystery that uh, teases your brain and gets you thinking and suspicious of everyone. It's why I like the game Among Us so much. Yeah, definitely Among Us is a very fun game um sometimes it can get a little bit too sweaty depending on the type of people you play with but oh absolutely it can get intense (laughs) it it does it does get pretty intense i I do enjoy seeing a good game of that um but it's it's the best when you're an imposter and like everyone's like suspecting each other but not you and i'm just sitting back like (laughs) absolutely (laughs) sips tea (laughs) (laughs) and they won't know it um so you did mention that you were like a big fan of like monsters and psychological horror. Does that include like um, Eldridge horror? Oh, Lovecraft. Yeah, like yes. a very Lovecraftian. Um... Oh, yes, absolutely. That that's that's some of my favorite. The idea that there are these horrific, super powerful beings like manipulating and controlling things behind the scenes that are just so like so far beyond humanity. Like, oh, it's such a great concept for horror. Yes. mm Hmm. Is there any anything in particular you were thinking of you wanted to ask me? Um, it wasn't really movie, but it's more of um tabletop game. Ooh, do tell. There is a uh, very good one that I, I like to play, Eldritch Horrors. Is it just called Eldritch Horrors? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's called Eldritch El- Eldritch Horror. That is that is the the tabletop game. Oh, okay. So they just need the game after the genre. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wait, wait. Let me actually find it. Uh, it's a it's a really fun game, very long game. Um, but I I definitely like playing it. It's filled with it's like a little bit of a mystery. Um, and you basically you get to pick several. It's like okay. So first off, it's a co op game, and Ooh. you you have to work together in order to either beat the the countdown before the either the cult group or either like you know the doomsday happens um so you either do that or you have to either kill cthulhu or you know kill like the the monster that's being summoned or if the doomsday countdown hits to zero maybe it's the end of the world kind of thing um it depends on which boss you decide to um take on for this one and you and your um comrades are basically traveling all around the world to either solve mysteries or gather clues to help you solve um how to close the gates or you know fighting eldritch beings or monsters and it's really really cool concept and i feel like if you're a big fan of um psychological horror and all that kind of stuff you should definitely play that game with friends oh absolutely that sounds like a riot yes <laughs> yeah now that one's definitely one of the more fun games i've played that are like eldritch horror related well thank you for the recommendation i'll, I'll remember to check this out yeah absolutely hmm uh blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Do you, do you, wait, do you live stream, actually? I do, indeed. Sweet. Wait, I gotta, I gotta follow you. Hold on. Oh, not on Twitch, on YouTube, oh. on YouTube. Well, I already followed you, so good talk. <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you planning on, um, interviewing other VTubers, or do you mostly focus on, like, voice actresses or voice actors? Oh, both. Like, I, I will glad- I just like interviewing content creators. Mm-hmm. Especially ones that seem kind of, like, uh, marginalized or there's a, a stigmatization around them. Like, I, I want to 
give a voice to uh, I want to I want to give a voice and help humanize people that are usually like targeted for like just ignorance. I, I want to help like show people like hey, these aren't just like voices and faces, these are people too. Mhm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually really cool. I I really appreciate um I I appreciate you, man. You're awesome. You're oh, thank absolutely you. awesome. Thank you, Lena, and I appreciate you too, despite how much you must, like, despise me for mispronouncing your name every five seconds. I'm sorry. Uh, you, you know what? You know what? Here, I'll just give you a little bonk on the <laughs> There, there. We, that, that's good enough. Thank you. Thank you. I needed yeah. that. We'll, we'll call it evens. Yes. <laughs> um, that's really all I've got for her. Uh, tits or ass. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's all about who they're attached to. Oh. I like that answer. <laughs> That's a cute answer. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, L Lena, Lena, I'm sorry, whatever. What, please say your name again so that I can get it right at least at the end here. <laughs> You're good, Lena. Lena, Lena, so I was getting it right half the time. Yes, yes, <laughs> half the time. Well, Lena, thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview. Thank you so much for, like, just sharing your passions and, like, uh, be, like just information on what you do. Like, you're awesome, and I know everyone is going to love you and want to follow you and support you. And I hope you'll come on the show again and, like, just uh, hang out and uh, meet my other friends and, like, uh, just, like... I I embrace, embrace my platform. Take my fans. Take my numbers. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I had so much fun just interacting with you, and I really hope we get to hang out more often. I, I really had fun. Anytime. Anytime. Anyways, one more time. So if people want to follow you and support you and see your stuff, where do they go? Um, I am mostly active on Twitter. It is at Lena VTuber, L-E-N-N-A-V-T-U-B-E-R. And my Twitch is Lena Seventh Lotus. It is L E N N A, the number seven T H L O T U S. Wonderful, wonderful. Links are in the description and in the comment section. Please click on the links. Now, here's the uh, last part of the interview. This is the most important part. What do we threaten the audience with to go follow and support you? Um, yeah. If you if you if you don't, I'm 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 gonna have to keep. Gonna have to keep bonking, bonking your your favorite, your favorite, your favorite YouTuber. <laughs> you don't. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep oh, going. God. I'm gonna keep oh, going. God. Keep going. Oh shit. I'm gonna keep going. <laughs>